Okay, so welcome everyone to this third and last session of the Barcelona Mathematics and Ma Machine Learning Colloquium Series. Uh, this is an activity organized by the Autonomous University of Barcelona. We do this having in mind all the Barcelona institutions and also uh, all the people who are joining us from all over the world. Uh, the aim of this activity is to talk about mathematics behind machine learning and what can machine learning do for mathematics. We do it just three times a year. We do it online and it's talk plus then a discussion. So you are welcome to ask questions anytime and especially uh, at the end of the talk and discuss freely. And the most important part of this activity is of course, who? And we started last year. These were our opening speakers. And this year we've had Laurent Laforgue, Gita Coutinho, and today we are very honored to have with us Professor Shin Tung Yao from Tsinghua University. So sure you know him and uh, he was awarded with the Fields Medal in 1982. And that wasn't the only prize as many. Let me just remind, for instance, the Wolf Prize in 2010 or the Shaw Prize in 2023. He's been for many years professor in Harvard University, but uh, yeah, in the last few years now he's at actually the Yao Mathematics Mathematical Science Center, Tsinghua University. So thanks a lot for accepting our invitation and the floor is yours. I'm flattered to be invited to give a talk for the AI conference. I'm not expert uh, in this subject. Uh, what I'm going to report about is uh, works that are done by my uh, co-workers and I learn from them. So the first part would be on uh, manifold uh, 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 fitting. And the second part, uh, this first part would be uh, largely the works by Qi Kong uh, <coughs> uh, Yao, Qi Kong Yao, Y-A-O, not Y-A-U, Qi Kong Yao, uh, from Singapore. And uh, the second part will be with uh, my former student, David Wu, uh, on geometric view of optimal uh, transport theory, explaining how it is applied for generative uh, models and use the mong equation to study such uh, generative AI. The third part, uh, the works are by uh, uh, Wu Yonglin, Yonglin Wu from our uh, center in BIMSA, called BIMSA, and they are more on medical imaging and all that. Uh, so let's start from uh, uh, the first work that I did, uh, uh, that largely was done by uh, Qi Gang Liao. So this is a frame from a very famous video, an example re recently produced by Sola. It's hard to tell if it's a real photo or not. Another example, uh, well, uh, Solo claims to be able to apply and understand the basic model of the world, generating content based on descriptions. Well, AGI, the Artificial General Intelligence, uh, they have uh, advocates when they arrive. And Solar has understood the well model, which called collect methodology, and continuing to develop along this direction. General AI is just around the corner. So that was uh, what they advocate. And then the second group of people, brute force advocates, Solar still has flaws at present with increased computational power and data, intelligence will naturally emerge. And the third group is dead end advocates. Uh, simulating the world using pixel generation is both a waste of computational power and a dead end. Uh, text is discrete, symbols are finite, and relative simple. It can be handled by generative AI. Sensory inputs are continuous and complex with much greater uncertainty and difficulty in prediction. Generative AI is inadequate for handling them. So that's what different group of people uh, look at this thing. And uh, well, uh, the opinion by our friends uh, here says that 
ATI arrival advocates uh, says SOLA approaches the intellectual level of preschool children, which the developed language and visual centers in the brain. It's still unable to approach the level of adult intelligence, abstract thinking, which is mathematical logic, uh, based on mathematical logic, has not yet been established. The brute force advocates uh, combining large language models with large visual models has great potential, but is unable to model abstract thinking. It's necessary to organically integrate connectism with symbolism. But the dead end advocate said solar stylization is correct combining large language model with large visual models. Further development would be large language model plus large visual models plus large mathematical models, which means abstract thinking also. Solar combines the power of large language models like the chat GPT and large visual models uh, like uh, uh, DA, E3, use text and images, videos, videos as input to generate high quality images and videos. As you can see here, it generates videos uh, based on text top. Sora doesn't seem to understand how the real world works in general. For example, it can generate videos of people running in reverse on the treadmill. This is another example. The video generated by Solo shows breaking through the glass with red wine. And this is another uh, example generated by uh, the Solar depicts clones of the puppy. Um, well, the basic framework of Solar starting from right hand side, the right block GPT-4 transform the human instruction into augmented prime. The prime and other image input are integrated together with CLIP, a con contrastive language image P training model, and fed to a diffusion model as input. The diffusion is performed in a relatively low dimension space. This is uh, the, in the middle, as uh, we describe here. It involves variation to the inputs, and usually it results in images in low resolution. On the left, there is a separately trained decoder to translate the result of diffusion into the images we want. It can be interpreted as super resolution sometimes. <clears throat> well, mathematical explanation of the solar framework. There are several spaces, like the text token sequence space, the latent feature space, and the image token sequence space. This space can be connected by many models, like variational auto encoder, optimal transport, and so on. So as is described in these pictures schematically. But solar combines with the large language model, the chap GPT, greatly enhancing the system's performance. Mistakes made by solar when simulating the physical well, correlations versus causality, joint distributions and mapping, local resonality versus global absurdity, infinite correlation length, missing critical states, regularity of transmission mapping, boundary of data manifolds. So the methodology needs further development incorporating abstract thinking and large mathematical models. Um, well, during the trans training uh, process of solar, billions of pairs of labeled data are used, which is impossible in the ed education of a child. Well, there are four primary spaces and four dual taken uh, sequence spaces here, as we see. Uh, 
The prime space A, B can be regarded as text space and image space, whose dual token sequence space can be obtained with neural networks. We are studying the transformation between the token spaces. The classical mathematical description of transformation between primary uh, spaces, the transformation between dual space is implemented by the transform transformers. Well, it's important to know whether the diagram is commutative or not. Uh, so, Well, in the field of generative models, people always say low dimensional latent spaces or manifolds is ambiguity as low dimensional latent space is not really manifolds. Perhaps we need more precise definition of lower dimensional space. And we will have to know what a manifold is in this uh, uh, AI setting. Well, the interesting manifold <laughs> this is a uh, a slice of the six dimensional Calabrian quintic manifolds, which has been interesting for many um, mathematicians and also physicists. And uh, well, Calabrian manifold is a manifold which I uh, propose to study uh, by proving the Calabrian conjecture. And this has been rather important in uh, string theory and actually. Uh, is probably more important in algebraic geometry, has been used to study uh, algebra, number theory, and differential geometry. And this is a, a six dimensional space, so you cannot really see it. You take a slice of it and you get a projection of that. And this has been used in physics to predict uh, the interaction between particles and the masses of uh, particles. Uh, so there are many uh, examples of Calabrian manifold, which is uh, waiting to be uh, determined which one is the right one. <clears throat> well, for imaging domain, uh, the happy Buddha surface is a two-dimensional manifold embedding in the three-dimensional equivalent space. Uh, so this is a uh, good example of a manifold. Uh, yeah, two mappings. Uh, well, the encoding from manifold to latent space in the middle. And then there is decoding from the latent space to manifold. Here the data are on the manifold, namely on the Buddha. There are infinite many encoding maps. Uh, so for example, uh, number C give another encoding. And one can produce many, many different encoding. And it is mathematically interesting to figure out those uh, good encoding maps. Uh, distribution and data manifolds can be mapped to latent space distribution. So these are the dots, and interesting uh, how they transform. Well, so this is a uh, generating model, generative model, utilize specified conditions and draw samples from a simple distribution, such as white noise as inputs. They then produce new samples that mimic a target distribution including output, like images, videos, and others. So that is how the generative model is described here. <clears throat> One example of classical generative model, autoencoder, uh, it consists of two symmetric deep neural networks. The width of the input and output layers, layer, layers are equal to the dimension of the ambient space, Rn. And the width of the bottleneck layer is equal to the dimension of the latent space, Rd. The first half of the network computes an encoding mapping, phi theta, and the second half of the network computes a decoding mapping, psi eta. 
densely sample on the data manifold sigma in the ambient space Rn, we obtain points x1 up to xn. Optimize the loss function given by this equation. So uh, L2 norm of xi minus psi eta uh, composite phi eta of xi. And we minimizing all possible uh, theta and eta, the encoding mapping and decoding modeling uh, mapping. So, well, if the loss is zero, then the restriction of psi eta composite phi theta is identity, and they are homomorphisms. <clears throat> Another example of classical generative model gone, and here it has two neural networks contesting with each other in a zero sum game framework. The generator tries to produce data resembling a certain training data set, and the discriminator tries to distinguish between genuine data, fake data produced by the generator. Through this competitive process, GANs uh, leads to generate new data similar to the training set. So here's another example of regular, uh, of recent popular generative model, diffusion model. So diffusion model add Gaussian noise to an input image over T steps, the forward process. This thing from neural network operation, they are trained to reverse this noise, enabling, enabling new data generation through the reverse diffusion process. <clears throat> Well, in the image, the upper part is an illustration for classical text to image generator. And the lower part is an illustration for modern large image generator, which has three separate parts. So they train three uh, submodels, uh, modules uh, on billions of text image pairs. First one is text embedding, uh, LLMS, uh, from chat, G, GPT, etc. Second part is generation in latent process spaces, diffusion models, variational auto and cook us. The third part decode the intermediate uh, and auto and cook the super resolution, etc. So there's high degree of freedom here. Uh, the question is, uh, important question is, uh, do we have uh, control? Uh, so classical models are more conservative to the latent manifold, while the modern models have too many degrees of freedom in the latent space. Can the model really generate something new on a low dimensional manifold? Or does it remember the low dimensional representation of certain training data and combine them, combine them through the training with billions of data? So now let's discuss manifold fitting. Uh, as uh, we discussed, these are the major works with the Singapore group uh, led by Qigong Yao. Uh, <clears throat> so the paper appears in the bottom uh, described here. Uh, well, so usually uh, in raw data science, uh, for example, RNA, uh, data are measured in very high dimension, uh, 10K to 40K variables. These are the genes. The latent, stru the, the latent structure behind the high dimension data is very low. One can view these data points are lying nearby a low D dimensional manifold embed into high dimensional space. So this data set can be abstract as a probability distribution view on the data manifold. Uh, so namely, sample can be modeled as the following, yi equal to xi plus theta i, for i equal to one to n. Uh, so xi is a element in sigma, which is sitting in rn, uh, the data manifold is sitting in a high dimensional ambient manifold, Rn. 
and observed sample from mu sigma. And then the theta i in this formula belongs to Rn, and theta i uh, is a, a sitting in the ambient space noise and phi sigma n. Yi belongs to Rn, and Yi is uh, coming from the observation. Uh, so mu convolved with this noise. So that's the setting. <clears throat> so, so why I can be seen as a convolution of probability measure of Xi on M and the noise distribution. So here's a handwritten digits example. Each digit one, two, three, uh, or zero is in is an inmate. They are a vector. Each of them can be embedded or mapped to a low D space. For example, we can use T distributes stochastic neighbor embedding or other linear methods. So the handwritten digits image can be explained uh, from a distribution on a 2D space embedded in the space of raised uh, images. So here's earthquake data. Earthquake data is a practical example where data can be seen as lying on the manifold itself. Here we are thinking the manifold to be the earth, which is a sphere. So you see the asymptotic, the central limit freedom on manifolds can be applied. And regression, uh, there are regression on Lie groups, uh, the Lie groups X on here. And there's full say regression. The classification <clears throat> has something to do with principal boundary. We can use it to classify manifolds. Uh, there are a huge effort to classify Caribbean manifolds and many uh, manifolds uh, proposed by defensive geometers. And extension of PCT, uh, <clears throat> PCA, the nonlinear generalization, principal flows, principal submanifolds, the PCA on sacred space, principal net spheres, toroids, etc. So this appeared in the recent work given by Qigong, Yao, and us. So now uh, we look at uh, the so called principal flow approach. It's a method that finds a flow, a one-dimensional flow, from the data where the tangent space of flow is parallel to the 1D subspace of the local data. The principal submanifold approach find, will find a surface, which is a submanifold from the data, where the tangent plane of the surface is parallel to the D minus D subspace of the local data. So, we try to find this subspace of maximum variation. We find a reasonably smooth d-dimensional subspace, gamma of sigma, such that for any point on sigma, the tangent space uh, to gamma is a subset of the subvector space of tangent space of sigma. The tangent space to gamma is approximately the span space of the leading D eigenvectors of the local covariance matrix at X. So gamma roughly is passing the center of the observations. For a strip data set on a sphere, we can find a curve that captures its most uh, of the variation and if necessary, find a proper encoding for it. <clears throat> Well, the connection of principal submanifold is interesting, and it is inspired by the work uh, by SYC. I mean, this is a paper that appeared in String Theory, uh, proposed by Schrominger, myself, and Sasso. And finding such a submanifold data lying on manifold is actually uh, very similar to this un seemingly unrelated conjecture, where we discussed about 
how the Kalabian weather plot can be written as a fibering space. And this is rather important uh, proposal in string theory. So this conjecture offers a geometric way of breaking a complicated space, such as a Kalabian manifold, into its constituent parts. Uh, the whole mathematics behind it is rather non-trivial. Well, the problem is related to principle of manifolds, which is an empirical calculation of such decomposition under some scenario from the noisy data. Uh, so the SYC paper appears in 1996 in nuclear physics. And the other part uh, is the works uh, appear in uh, uh, by, uh, by uh, Qigong Yao. So how do, uh, how do we work on this? If a manifold is not known, the problem is very different. We need to learn the manifold from noisy data. Provided that the manifold uh, distribution principle holds. <clears throat> In late 90 to 2010, many methods have been developed called manifold learning. These are actually embedding approaches which essentially dimensional reduction methods. Learn a method, let, let the word, one tries to learn a mapping from higher dimension to lower dimension without estimating the manifold. We report the manifold fitting. We try to learn the manifold in its original space, the space where the data were measured. So in these pictures, black points are noisy points. This curve is a manifold. We push the black point to the manifold in the original space so that they are close to the manifold. From those push points, we try to fit a smooth manifold. And these appear in uh, several papers. Uh, two of them appear in uh, PNAS. Uh, one already appeared as uh, uh, fitting here. And another one is uh, being revised. And the revised paper is to use the manual fitting in single cell RNA. The dimension is 15 to 40 K. So it's rather interesting uh, that it works well. So this is the illustration of the manual fitting idea in the archive paper that we just show you. For any red dot, any point, we need to find a dominant direction to push the point into the manifold. But we don't just we don't just push it to the manifold at once. We do two steps. We get the blue points, which is close to the manifold, and use a cylinder by connecting the blue and the red uh, as a normal direction and further push the point to the manifold which is a green pond in this picture. So in this end, we will have many green ponds as the noise ponds. So we therefore can push a noisy pond along a good direction and obtain a smooth a manifold estimator, which we call sigma head. And the sigma head is a smooth manifold, is closely represent sigma, and it remains in the same ambient space. This is a description of what we did. OK, data manifolds can be fit with new networks, like the cycle gun model, which is described here. And this is a, there is a low dimensional latent space, C, and a high dimensional ambient manifold, uh, Y. The observation in space Y is the same as in the previous slides. The model has two generators and discriminators, trained with the adversarial framework, which means the generators try to generate fake items to fool the discriminators, while the discriminators try to distinguish the fake items from the real ones. We also add a manifold fitting submodule to define the results in space Y. 
we can control the dimension and distribution in space C. The overall target is to find generator GC, minimizing some divergence between the distribution of Y and the convolution of noise and the push forward of distribution in space D. That is fit the target distribution <clears throat> meant for through a controllable low dimensional space. So this uh, what I just said uh, explained uh, in this uh, picture schematically. So there's a, <clears throat> a latent space D and there's a high dimensional N Y here. <clears throat> and there's generator GC, GY, and the discriminators DC and DY on the left and the right. And FM is the important thing, is a method manifold fitting submodule. The manifold, uh, the main uh, objective is let C to be uniform this, uh, distribution in this interval to the power D, and we minimize minimizing the uh, divergence part. And the data manifold can be estimated with the generators as a result. So this appear in this paper, <coughs> appear in uh, this year in PNAS. <clears throat> and uh, after training the net network, which is similar to solve the optimization problem, we can use a two learned generator, uh, GC hat and the GY hat to achieve three stars. Uh, free, I mean, achieve free targets. Well, so we saw uh, using uh, a very general principle, GC star and GY star by doing mini maps. And the manifold estimator is written as M tilde, is the image of GC star hat EZ, or F hat, uh, M hat equal to FM M tilde to estimate M. Noisy, Cancellation is obtained by the composite of these two uh, mappings, uh, GC star head and GY star head. So you map YI to YI head in the uh, uh, M tutor. Nonlinear interpolation, we define in this uh, uh, formula, in nonlinear interpolate between YI head and YJ head. So <clears throat> here is an example, a simple example, toy example of this model. We generate the image of an L shape by rotating it in a 2D plane. The clean image should be a 2D, a 1D manifold, one dimensional manifold, although they have hundreds of pixels. Then we add white noise to the clean images. Panel A present some examples. We can use the learned generators to denoise them. Panel B are the corresponding images. And for the two images with black box in A, we can also use the generators to generate some nonlinear interpolation between them, which is the sequence in panel C. <clears throat> so it's all in this picture. Uh, uh, Image a rotating symbol shape with ambient space noise is on the first picture A. The denoise version of A with cycle uh, gun manifold fitting model is B. The C is a nonlinear interpolation of two examples with red box in A. Well, apart from images, the idea of a manifold can also Use in many other fields. Uh, this page is a single cell RNA uh, data example. Uh, so there's a data set coming from this paper, uh, and there are 704 cells with uh, 13,473 features in three classes. And <clears throat> as you see in the uh, picture, uh, there's a stem cell uh, from the mouse and brewing. And there are <clears throat> uh, uh, pictures in here. The focus is utilizing the potential molecular mechanism governing cell differentiation and maintenance, keeping the free classes 
of mouse and brewer stem cells, stem cells, improving other unsupervised cluster method with the help of fitting. So we use the manifold fitting, as we mentioned earlier. <clears throat> So manifold fitting manifolds improve the spatial distribution of the data and the unsupervised cluster, clustering score, score for this data after fitting the right significantly higher than the other methods without using the fitting on the left. So uh, it has a, uh, a great efficiency. Uh, the left is a clustering accuracy is 57%. Percent and the right hand side is a good percentage, 100 percent. So we collect 25 data sets from the recent nature, science, and cell papers, and we compare the clustering accuracy of manifold fitting based method with another cutting uh, cutting edge method, uh, single cell DHA. The accuracy is measured by ARI, adjust RAN index. And in most of these data sets, manifold fitting improves the ARI. And on average, manifold fitting improves ARI from 57% to 75%. So that's pretty good. So it has significantly improved the clustering uh, result. We implement manifold fitting uh, into a single cell RNA clustering framework called SCAMF. The pipeline is shown in this slide. The SCAMF pipeline processes raw data through transformations and denoising. Through the manifold fitting followed by the unsupervising, unsupervised clustering. It concludes with a validation step, outputting the final custom result. So uh, it, this is the uh, being uh, ap appearing in the PNAS uh, in this paper. <clears throat> Under the same framework, we test the effectiveness of manifold fitting by comparing ARI with and without performing manifold setting. The red dogs <clears throat> represent ARI with manifold fitting, and the blue dogs are ARI without manifold fitting. So from this picture, it's clear that the manifold fitting has a significant effect. Well, let's summarize uh, about uh, so what we have said so far. Uh, so, well, uh, it's a few not necessary with uh, billion scale data, data manifolds plus data science. Then we have uh, a thinking of metric learning on data manifolds, generalized dimension reduction manifold, methods on manifolds, etc., and the application to cell scape, enhanced cells atlas builder, health, enhanced precision medicine, and sub type analysis. And here's a group that we collaborating and with uh, Qigong Yao. So this is uh, uh, about the manual fitting. Now on the second part here, we will focus on the geometric view of optimal transportation theory, uh, largely work with uh, David Gu in Stony Book, uh, who was my former student. It explains uh, how it's applied for generative, generative models and use the regularity theory of Mong's pair equation to understand the more collapsing problem in current generative AI, especially the physical mistakes made by solar. Finally, based on the geometric theory, a novel generative AI model will be proposed to avoid these uh, problems these mistakes. So the major task of deep learning, as we explained before, training data set can be treated as the distributions on low dimensional data manifold 
embed in high dimensional ambient space. Therefore, according to the Manifold Distribution Principle, the major tasks for generative AI are to learn the following thing, the manifold structure using encoding and decoding maps, which are approximated by deep neural network with large amount of parameters. Second, the data distributions which are represented by transportation maps from the data distribution to canonical distribution, such as uniform distribution or Gaussian distributions. The transportation the transportation uh, uh, maps are also approximated by deep neural maps. Namely, eventually everything is represented by deep neural networks with huge amount of parameters. In this part, I will introduce how to learn the distributions. The most popular technique is to learn the transportation maps are the heat diffusion method and the optimal transport method. So, uh, well, so according to this manual distribution principle, the major tasks of deep learning are to learn data manifold structure by manifold fitting and data distribution by transportation maps or plans. The, trans the transport maps are described in the following way. The data distribution omega mu is transport to the Gaussian or uniform distribution uh, omega star nu. Full variation algorithms, mostly uh, we use diffusion maps or optimal transport maps. So the generative model, uh, traditionally the input to a generative AI model is a white noise image, the output is an image which looks extremely realistic. Recently, OpenAI has made a breakthrough for the text to video generative model, SOLAR, which takes text plum as the inputs and generative uh, coherent realistic uh, uh, videos. So the generating adversary network guns are very popular. Uh, the training data set on the data manifold is mapped to the latent space by the encoder. Each image is encoded by a feature vector. Each feature vector is mapped back to the data manifold by the decoder to a generated image. The discriminator compares the training data distribution and the generated data distribution. The data distribution on the manifold is pushed forward to the latent data distribution and a transform and a transform map is learned to transform the white noise distribution to the latent data distribution. The composition of the transform, transform map and the decoding map is a generator which generates image from the noise, white noise. The generator and the discriminator compete with each other until they reach the Nash equilibrium. At the equilibrium, human being cannot differentiate the fake image from the real ones. <clears throat> so these are the uh, examples uh, that appears. And uh, now, uh, did we visualize the concept of trans transport map on the planar unities? We use black dots to show the distribution. The left frame de demonstrates the source distribution. The dots are denser in the central part and the sparser in the forehead region. And uh, after a transformation from the disk to itself, the target distribution on the right becomes uniform. The automorphism introduces local area distortion namely the Jacobian. Since the whole process is mass preserving, the density is changed accordingly. So you can see uh, what I said by looking at this picture, how the red dot distributes. Well, there's a uh, well-known 
problem dates back to the old days a couple hundred years ago called the optimal transport map. So it's proposed by a French uh, mathematician called Mons. Mons uh, proposed uh, the optimal transport map problem. They given a compact metric space, omega and omega with measures d mu equal to fx dx and d nu equal to gy dy. And we assume the total measure between two measure spaces are the same. Uh, then we want to give a transport map from omega to omega star, satisfying uh, that uh, equation, which simply means, means that it preserves measures on for all Borel set sitting in omega star. So T is a measure P7 map, which we denote to be T equal to uh, T subscript mu equal to new uh, star. So given a transport cost, each transportation may have some cost, uh, like uh, the uh, when you move along, you need to use gasoline and whatsoever. So it is described by a cost function C, which is a map from omega cos omega star to uh, R. And this is a uh, uh, important uh, question. This optimal transport um, map, we want to minimize its cost. So this is a problem proposed uh, to by Monge uh, many years ago. And uh, this is an interesting uh, uh, problem. Uh, that uh, most race. Well, if the transport cost is the square of the Euclidean distance, as is rather common, uh, then there's a freedom due to Bernier. It's a nice freedom. It says the optimal transport map T is actually a greater map of a potential function, uh, which we call a Bernier potential function. T is greater than U, where U will satisfy a nice von Schoenberg equation, determining uh, the Hessian of the map uh, of the function, scalar function, potential U, is equal to Fx, uh, which is coming from the uh, cost function, uh, equal to G uh, composite greater than U. This is the interesting fully nonlinear elliptic equation. I did not realize this equation many years ago. Uh, in 1970s, early 70s, uh, S.Y. Chang and myself studied this problem for a completely different reason. Uh, we studied this equation to understand the classical Minkowski problem, and also uh, as a preliminary uh, uh, preparation to prove the Calabi conjecture, which is a quite a bit more complicated equation than this one. Um, so, uh, so we actually uh, studied this one long time ago without knowing that it's related to uh, this optimal transportation problem. So, the Monsenpe equation actually has a deep roots in differential geometry. There's a famous Minkowski problem ask whether we can determine a convex body by its Gauss curvature in uh, Gauss conical curvature. In the discrete case, the Minkowski problem can be formulated as whether one can determine the shape of a convex polyhedron by its phase area and the normals. Minkowski himself proved the existence and the uniqueness using a variational approach. Uh, Professor Chen, S.Y. Chen, and myself studied the regularity of the solution of high-dimensional Minkowski problem in 1975, actually. And we, the paper was published in 1976. And this rather challenging and interesting question, Minkowski problem. And uh, so there's a... Uh, uh, we want to understand more. We like to generalize. Uh, the previous study was a closed surface, 
we want to generalize Minkowski subproblem from closed convex polyhedra to open polyhedra. And this was uh, obtained by Alessandro in 1950, in the old days. Um, so Chang and I studied high dimensional version, which is actually important. So Alessandro Philom says that given omega, a planar convex domain, omega, an open convex polyhedron is project to the domain, as you see on the right hand side of this picture. Alessandro claimed that the shape of the polyhedron, the one uh, in the sitting above, can be determined uniquely by the phase normal and the area of interaction, uh, intersection between the projection and domain omega. So essentially, Alessandro Philom claims the shape of the convex surface can be determined by this Gaussian curvature. So it's a nice, beautiful film. Both the Brunier problem and the Alexander problem can be formulated to the same Wong's Ampere equation. Uh, from this point of view, one can bleach convex dependent geometry with optimal transport theory and use the geometric insights to study the statistical problems. By solving the Alexander problem, we can tackle the Brunier problem. Uh, Unfortunately, Alexander's original proof is based on purely algebraic topology, which is not constructive for the purpose of generative AI. Uh, so David Gu and Fen Law and myself and several other students, we developed a very reasonable approach to compute the Alexander polyhedron in 2016, uh, which leads to a practical algorithm com for computing transport maps used for generative model. So this is a rather interesting uh, thing. And so, uh, so until, although we know the existence, we know quite a lot of theory about it, to make it to be concrete, we use some idea from the uh, uh, old paper to actually make it to be practical in this paper in 2016. <coughs> So here we visualize the computational framework. The top left shows the linear potential equivalently the Alexandrov polyhedron. The top right shows the regenerative due of the linear potential. The lower left shows the cell decomposition of the disk. Each cell is mapped to a vertex of the planar triangulation on the right lower right. The area of each cell equal to the given measure. This mapping is a gradient map of the linear potential and is the optimal transport map among all possible cell decompositions. So this is a rather uh, nice practical way to compute. The algorithm optimizes a convex energy using the Newton's method and use the conventional power diagram. And the weight and the weight belonging triangulation algorithm in computational geometry. So it's a rather interesting method. And well, how we demonstrate uh, one computational example here: the Buddha surface is conformally mapped into the planar unities. The surface area element is compute forward to a measure on the disk, which we denote to be mu. We can see that the head region has been greatly shrunk. An optimal transport map is compute transforming the measure mu to the conventional Lubbock measure. The composition of the optimal transport map and the conformal map gives a area preserved map from the Buddha surface to the unit disk. Namely, for any surface patch on the Buddha surface, its surface area equal to the area of its planar image. We can see the head region has been enlarged uh, prominently. Well, 
Here, we visualize uh, the linear potential of the optimal transport map. Note that the inverse of an optimal transport map is also optimal. Hence, it is a gradient map of another convex potential. The two linear potential are regenerated due to each other. Combinatorically, they are represented as the dual pair, dual pair of upper envelope and converse how. The panel images are represented as the dual pair of power diagram and weak delonate triangulation in, computers, in computational geometry. So this appears in the paper uh, here, David Gu, Lau, uh, Lau and uh, Sun. Well, it's interesting when we are dealing with non converse geometry, things are different. Uh, Fagetti, uh, who is a field medal winner, he studied the singularity structure of optimal transport map. He gave this example showing in the picture here. And the optimal transport map is from a uniform distribution on the planar unities, is mapped to a uniform distribution defined on a concave planar domain. The black graph shows the singularity set of the map where the transport map is now discontinuous. Well, in deep learning, all the maps are represented by deep neural network, which can only represent continuous maps. Therefore, the transport map with singularity cannot be represented by neural network. This caused many troubles in AI models. <laughs> so we can use our geometric variational algorithm to find the singularities precisely. The top row shows the optimal transform map from the disk to the concave region. The left two frames shows the planar potential view from different angles. The potential function is continuous everywhere, but not defensible. On the points in the red curves. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, this is a very interesting, uh, um, namely the projection of the red curve is the singularity set. The bottom row shows an optimal transport map from the solid ball to the solid bundle. Both of them are with the uniform distribution. The image of the bunny surface has many folding, which is the singularity of the map. Well, currently, uh, we're talking heat uh, diffusion, another most popular method to compute the trans transport map is through heat diffusion process. So given a probability distribution, low dx, on the domain omega, one compute is entropy, which is defined here by h equal to integral low log low. One can define the flow field in the domain, which maximizes the entropy by using variational calculus. The flow field is obtained as v equal to gradient log low. Under this entropy flow, the density evolves according to a heat diffusion equation, uh, d, u, d low over dt equal to minus la plus and low. So from the, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the longitudinal dynamics, the equivalent stochastic defensive equation can be defined as dx equal to f dt plus g dw. f, g are the drift and the diffusion coefficients and W is a Brownian motion. Uh, the, discretion, the discrete approximation can be written in the following way. This stochastic uh, dependent equation has a corresponding back, uh, backward SDE also. And uh, it's, in practice, it's difficult to compute the density function low. Therefore, we use this uh, longitudinal dynamics to compute the heat flow. And, uh, we use the stochastic dependent equation to mimic the heat flow. This equation has, as I said, a bad web uh, SDE. 
<clears throat> okay, um, so in in this paper in here, uh, we are studying a uh, examples. Okay, so intuitively, the stochastic defensive map, equation method is equivalent to adding white noise to an image multiple times until the image becomes white noise. The reverse process is equivalent to reducing white noise from this image until the original image is restored. So, Optimal transform map can transport any source measure to the target measure. Heat defense map uh, uh, maps source measure to Gaussian distribution only. Geometric optimal transport map can discover the singularity set, which gives the support boundaries of the target measure precisely. Heat diffusion obscures the support boundary of the target measure. The support boundary of the data distribution have special physical or logical importance. Ignoring or causing them will cause physical mistakes for generative models. So, singularity set experiment, generative model for human facial images, you can see from here. The blue lines in omega cross the singularity set of the OT map, optimal transportation map. The blue curves on sigma cross the boundary of the manifold. So we discuss about this in this paper down here. The, uh, the boundary of the data manifold can be seen here and uh, and uh, you can see the heterotic chromatic phases are on the boundary of the human face image manifold, which are detected by the singular singularity set of the geometric optimal transportation map. Uh, well, here is an example again, the solar video generation system from OpenAI emerge unexpectedly stung in the well, as we said before. The top left leaf shows a generated manifold in solar, and uh, the, the diffuser ignores the support boundaries of the latest latent of the latent distribution, thus induce mistakes. That's what we see it, and so is this example. And the vast majority of physical process in nature involved an alternation between steady states and critical states. In steady states, system parameters change slowly, making observation data easy to obtain. In critical states, the system undergoes abrupt changes, catching observers off guard, making it difficult to capture observational data. Critical state samples in physical process are often distributed at the boundary of the data manifold. And during the generating generation process, solar tends to skip over critical states. Instead, in human coordination, the most critical observations often pertain to the critical states with nearly zero probability. So here are the examples where you see the clone of purpose puppies. Solar generates a video of a group of puppies playing and frog licking, sometimes hiding behind each other, sometimes dispersing. In one moment of the video, the three puppies on the screen suddenly become four. The image of the three or four puppies from a connect component form a connect component on the manifold 
At the boundary of the four public branch, there's a critical event. That's what happens. The four public uh, purpose uh, are partially occupied by each other, and only three are visible. Solar causes the boundary of the two branches, four suddenly becomes three. Geometric uh, optimal transportation is able to detect the branch boundary and reduce the physical mistakes. So, conclusion by manifold distribution principle, the fundamental task for generative models are to learn the manifold structure and learn the distribution. The manifold fitting method learns the manifold structure and the transport maps learn the distribution. Due to the regularity theory of Monson pair equation, the transport map may have singularity set. Some of the physical mistakes made by solar are due to absence of critical states, and it because the diffusion model obscures the boundary of the branches. Geometric variational method for optimal transport can detect the boundaries precisely and has the potential to collect mistakes of current generated models. So this is uh, the part we use geometric methods to uh, study uh, using optimal transportation to study uh, uh, these problems in the generated model. Now we come to part three, which is uh, a group of people led by uh, 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 Wu Yongli, Yongli Wu, uh, called Dynamical System Modeling of AI using GLMY theory. So GLMY theory is a theory of graph. So this is uh, more related to biology. So we look at a complex system, and this is in terms of the number of components in the axons, just like tumor. Tumor contains many distinct cell types that interact with each other in a complex way to determine the tumor behavior. Even for cells, there are thousands of genes, reactions, and metabolites inside which function as a whole. In nature, of course, complex systems appear everywhere. And let's see how the dynamical system and its role in AI. Networks are fundamental to complex systems. Networks can capture how each component interact with each other, each other component to save the system's dynamics. Microbial interaction uh, 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 in the gut uh, microbiome biota affects human health and disease. Uh, some of them, such as number 59, <clears throat> directly affect BMI. Uh, whereas many others, like number 4 and number 63, are linked with BMI through complex in dilate pathways. And you see from this picture. And um, so we look at a unified statistical mechanics framework for network reconstruction. We integrate evolution game theory, allometric scaling law, graph theory, and topology theory to build a unified framework for reconstructing informative, dynamical, and over Dilational and personalized networks. This framework can address the following issues. Nonlinear interdependency among components constituting the complex system, causal relationships of variables inside and outside complex system, information manifolds from one variable to the next, coinciding of all components into multi -layer, layer and multi Plus networks. PCA is one commonly used approach for high dimensional data analysis through linear combination and reduction of variable into orthogonal PC units. The network framework is more advantageous over PCA by capturing all possible causal interrelationship among all variables without information loss. So this is a proposal developing here. And the dynamical system, dynamic models or networks in AI can be described in this picture. And we 
get the differential equations which governs what's going on. And then we have differential difference equation and state space models, stochastic process models, branching process, agent based models, and serial automata. And then we build a, a graph uh, a connection uh, between them through graph theory, where we study informative, dynamical, multidimensional, and personalized networks. And these graph theory are quite interesting, was developed recently, uh, last 10 years by a group led by me. And the dynamical mod modeling can fit back. So we reconstructing tri-dimensional geometry networks of biological process in this way. The network across different spaces from genes to transpose, uh, to transcribe uh, transcripts to <clears throat> proteins to metabolics to uh, microbiomes to uh, phenotypes. So this is a picture describing the process. And uh, reconstructing high order interaction network and uh, gut microbiota. So here's a picture from a uh, 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 yeah, 215 data, including 184 samples from a founder. And this gives rise to a very interesting dialect graph, which is written down here. This graph has interesting phenomena that we can use. This is called GMLY theory, uh, representing four authors who invent this theory of graph theory. It's a graph theory uh, for dialect graph with cohomology which we can use it to review how healthy subjects differ from disease groups. Uh, the diff they differ in the pattern of interdependency among lung function traits in here. This paper uh, was described uh, here in the bottom of the paper. So uh, at last, we just say that dynamic system modeling is an important part for AI. Network modeling is a key approach for characterize complex system. An integrative approach shows its power to reconstruct informative, dynamical, omnidimensional, and personalized networks from any data domains. The integration of the graph theory can leverage network model to reveal hidden patterns of complex system from big data. So these are the uh, very brief summary of the work that we did on medical imaging and biology process and all that. So I will stop here. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for this uh, yeah, very complete talk. And um, it's now time for questions and discussion. So you're welcome to raise your hand or open your microphone. If someone wants to intervene. Okay, let me let me get the first one. So uh, you've mentioned, I think it was around uh, yeah, uh, slide 46, how these results you uh, studied. I think it was for the Monchamper equation. Right. Uh, you did it without knowing that the, then they they could be useful, like for yeah, uh, what you are doing right. now. Right. So yeah, and I wanted to ask you that it's a bit of a double question. Were there some like mathematical things you knew that and you thought this could be very helpful for the problems you are dealing with now for machine learning and then it turned out they weren't like uh this is the first one and the second one is the opposite is there something now like you haven't told us about that you think it has a great potential but you are still looking at it or you are still learning about it Oh yeah, well, uh, this problem here, Monchamper equation, uh, we were extremely excited about it, not because of AI or optimal transportation, mm -hmm. because I was fully uh, uh, concentrated on solving the Calabi conjecture, mm -hmm. which is actually uh, quite a bit more complicated than this equation. Mm -hmm. And this is a toy model for me, so I want mm -hmm. to study it first. It turns out it's related to old literature, so we are interested in it. Mm -hmm. But over this last uh, 40 years, we have been studying many things. Most of them, are, I think, are very interesting. The graph theory that we just mentioned 
It says we are now have more than 10, 20 people in here studying uh, the graph theory in terms of its structure, geometric structure. We develop cohomology theory and many other important questions uh, relating the eigenvalues in order to understand the direct graph. And we try to decompose this graph using this kind of geometric approaches and topological approaches. And they seem to be able to figure out some uh, distinction between different graphs, how they can be uh, the special uh, features of the graph are different which cannot be seen by the naked eyes. Uh, you look at a, even a simple graph, direct graph, you don't, from your naked eye, you may not see the difference. But from studying the cohomology, the path cohomology and all this, we actually can see the difference. So I think this is a very potential, very powerful way to understand uh, uh, structures appear in nature, which, are, which is the simplest, uh, uh, structure in nature is a graph. Given two points, whether it's drawn by edge or not, or uh, then the dialect graph give, give you a dialectic. So for this kind of very primitive structure, we can still distinguish the difference between them, especially when the number of points are bigger. Well, uh, I think this still uh, uh, is a very exciting subject because we only understand some part of it. And uh, the one of the problem is that the computation power we need to uh, enlarge uh, to understand them better. We can now only compute a, a small number of vertices, but it already shows very interesting nature. And I think uh, we are putting a lot of effort to understand this graph. As I said, in in the biology or material science, it already shows some use of it. And then uh, we also develop something. Uh, relate to uh, 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 filtering, uh, control theory. Uh, uh, common filter is a subject studying linear uh, 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 process, uh, but uh, the world is full of nonlinear phenomena. So it has been a uh, major problem for a long time how to compute uh, uh, the nonlinear filtering. And we were able to do it. Uh, but uh, so uh, the number of state that we are able to control the dealing with is a uh, lower uh, number. And you know, in the order of 100 maybe state space, we like to enlarge it to, to be huge number. And I hope AI can be used to help to study nonlinear field and problem. This nonlinear field and problem, I think will be useful for AI itself to understand AI. And vice versa, AI should allow us to compute this uh, answer in a more effective way, lower the dimension uh, the dependency. So I think these are two different approaches uh, that we are very excited about, that we are doing it here in Tsinghua. So mm -hmm. non-linear filtering, but also the direct graph of theory. Okay, thank you for the answer. Uh, yeah, I have a few more questions, but any, if someone wants to ask a question, just raise your hand. Um, my second question is about uh, in slide 28, you mentioned the SYZ yeah. conjecture. So I, I wonder if you could elaborate a bit more on that okay. because yeah, we are an audience of yeah, mainly math mathematicians. So yeah, that sound, sounded yeah. very interesting. As I said, a, a Kravio manifold is a six dimensional manifold. And it supposes it is quite nature. Uh, the mm -hmm. particle interaction and all that are incorporated into the geometry of this manifold. And the geometry of this six star manifold is rather complicated. And both in topology and in geometry. And this, that's why a lot of hidden uh, knowledge about universe can be embedded into such a manifold. And uh, about uh, 30 years ago, uh, my friend uh, Strominger, in, uh, and also Alex Aslo, who was my postdoc, we developed a theory to see how to decompose the uh, Calabria manifold into pieces. So we study a fiber space structure of this manifold. Uh, so we decompose it by toroids, three dimensional toroids. And each of them encodes informations, and the toroids uh, being a fiber space, 
actually could also encounter singularity. It degenerates, and this all give deep information about the manifold. And this, uh, we propose a very interesting uh, uh, questions about this decomposition. The toroid has some duality, uh, dual toroid, and we can replace the toroid and look at the dual toroid, and this create different class of manifolds, which uh, exhibit interesting duality structure. Uh, the duality structure is called mirror symmetry in uh, Calabrian manifolds, and this mirror symmetry actually exhibit very interesting phenomena, namely they give rise to the same quantum field theory. Although the picture are completely different, they give different topology and all that. Uh, but by simply replacing the toroid by its dual toroid, we exhibit many interesting duality structure, which helps to understand rather deep uh, meaning of the manifold itself. So how to decompose the manifold or the space into different lumps uh, uh, skillfully and efficiently, and also to make sure in each decomposition, you have some structure, namely the duality structure, uh, this becomes useful. So uh, in two dimension, uh, the Calabria manifold is six dimension, in two dimension, you can look at the toroid to the circle. Then you are looking and how to decompose the manifold by circles. Uh, in high dimension, uh, four dimension, you use toroid T2. In six dimension, you use T3. And each toroid has the dual latex, and you use that to build the structure. So one can, the, the important point here is that we decompose a complicated space into simple space. Uh, each space has some structure by itself, namely the toroid. The toroid is a, is an additive group, and it has a dual structure. So we make use of this together and to develop uh, information about this manifold. So we hope that uh, this can be used to do uh, many in interesting uh, uh, general manifold uh, discussion also. OK, thanks. I also wanted to ask you, how, how did you arrive to this, say, machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh topics like were you there let's say from the very beginning were you interested were when neural networks were around or is it something more recent like uh, because of the recent well, hype first of all in, no in the last 10 years uh uh david Wu uh, was my phd student uh he graduated from harvard in 1999 uh there was a time when david munford left harvard to mm -hmm. uh, Brown, and uh and David Gu is a very talented man, and he likes mathematics, but he's doing computational geometry. So he come to talk with me, and he want me to be his advisor. So then I start to think about how to apply classical geometry to study computational geometry. So mm -hmm. we worked for about uh, 10 years, uh, more than 10 years, uh, using conformal method and quasi-conformal methods in order to study uh, 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 imaging. And this has been rather useful. Uh, we can use the conformal method was actually developed by us. And this was used for uh, imaging and also for medical imaging and all those. So there's some surface and then quasi conformal map, diagnosis of cancer and all that. And later we keep on developing and then we have another group of people joining in uh, from Taiwan, uh, 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 Wen Wei Lin and several other people, and then uh, 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 several uh, many other people uh, come in. And so then we start to learn about, uh, well, David is a very talented man. Then he started to be interested in this machine learning and all that. So he started to teach me how it works. And uh, so I learned from them. And uh, the the one the most read, middle one about the manual fitting I learned from uh, Qi Gang Yao, who is a young fellow, a very uh, prominent prominent uh, uh, primary physician. I'm learning from all of them, and the last one was I'm learning from Wu Yongling Wu. So basically, I'm trying to learn on the on my process. At the same time, I'm still doing my fundamental mathematics. I'm still working on Calabrian manifolds. 
and uh, completely different subject in a way, but on the other hand, it does inspire ideas to yeah. work on this, apply things. Hmm. Okay, and actually, yeah, my last question was actually, how, how do you distribute your time? Like now you think about yeah, how much time do you devote to say more like pure fundamental math and this more towards applying? What, what would you answer? What's the distribution? Well, I have a uh, running an institute called uh, um, BIMSA, a Beijing Institute of Applied Mathematics. Mm -hmm. And there we have a large group of uh, applied mathematicians, which I uh, meet them uh, regularly mm -hmm. and listen to their seminars. And also in Tsinghua, we have a group of people working in artificial intelligence and all that. So I learned from them also. And I have my own students with one seminars together. So basically, a rather busy days each day. And mm -hmm. from apply to pure, well, I mm -hmm. always spend half and half time in each subject. OK. So yeah, unless there are other questions from the audience, uh, yeah, let us thank you again for uh, okay. this very nice talk. We, are, we were pleased and honored to have you here now because it's the last talk of the cycle. Let me just uh, close it just by saying, okay, we've uh, been uh, yeah, very pleased to have Laurent Laforgue, Gita Continue, Karanshin Tungyao, and we'll continue next year. We usually start in February, and in 2025, uh, let me tell you who will open the series. I'll do it in an in, in inverse way so that it will be a bit of a riddle. So actually, he got also the Fields Medal in 1978. He works on mathematical analysis, um, Princeton University, and it will be Charles Pfefferman who will open uh, our cycle next year. So, um, yeah, we hope to see you all there. And uh, thanks to all of you, especially to the speakers for this very nice edition of the Barcelona Mathematics and Machine Learning Colloquium Series.